You have one job when you're meeting with a seller in a listing presentation, and that is to make them feel comfortable. Build rapport. Hello, welcome to episode 207 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Chris Tafford. With more than 30 years as a listing agent in the San Francisco market, Chris launched the Agent Unleashed to help fellow real estate professionals grow their businesses by focusing on the marketing methods they enjoy. Throughout our conversation, Chris shares his tips for getting listings without spending additional money, how to grow your sphere of influence through professional referral relationships, and why mindset training and confidence play such a major role in your success on listing appointments. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new guests to inspire our listeners. And lastly, if you enjoyed this conversation and want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents podcast. We stream on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. All right, let's get on with our conversation with Chris Stafford. Be sure to check out The Agent Unleashed at theagentunleashed.com. I have a link in the episode description as well as links to Chris's social channels. All right, well, really the way I like to start everything off is if you could introduce yourself to us a little bit, uh, who you are, where you're at, and a, a brief um, you know, synopsis of your real estate experience. So, Michael, thank you so much for having me on. My name, again, is Chris Stafford, and I've been a real estate agent, specifically a listing agent in San Francisco for, my God, I think I started in 1937. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but really, I think it, I've been like 33 years. It's like 30 plus years I've been a listing agent in San Francisco. I used to be a, still am, I guess, a CPA, I used to work for PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, and after 11 years, it took me a little while um, to figure out that I hated my job and that I really wanted to do something that I felt super passionate about. So um, a friend of mine talked me into real estate, and I was just so I loved real estate so much that I just loved it. So, yeah, I started in real estate in San Francisco, uh, hired a coach right out of the gate, uh, spent a thousand dollars a month. Uh, on a real estate coach, which back then in the 1990s, that was a lot of money, still is a lot of money. And been doing that for quite a while, for quite a while. And then maybe about 10 years ago, I decided, you know, after being in the business for so long, there's some things happened in my life. I decided to start coaching real estate agents. And, uh, you know, I love, I, I could probably quit selling real estate in San Francisco right now. I don't really need it, but I love doing it. It just brings me so much joy. But, you know, also in addition, coaching other real estate agents, I absolutely love it. I absolutely, I'm, I, I just, it brings me so much joy that I can't stop doing either. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely want to touch on um, uh, your coaching and what you're doing with that. But first, you know, kind of going back to when you got into real estate, um, breaking it, San Francisco has always been a very competitive market. Uh, you know, what was it like, you know, breaking into the market and then eventually becoming a listing agent there? Well, it, at the time, Michael, um, I wasn't smart enough. I was dumb enough to doubt myself. <laughs> so I didn't doubt myself as an agent. I just sort of went, went for it. Um, this real estate coach had me starting off cold calling and I didn't know what else to do. So I was so green and naive. I decided, okay, I'm going to make cold calls. So I, day one, I just started making hundreds of phone calls, hundreds of cold calls. And, um, I think that when I first went into real estate, I got my first listing uh, and my first commission check within two months of going into real estate, uh, which which um, I thought was pretty cool. And it didn't take me long to realize that that you can make more money in selling listings, being a listing agent. You can leverage your time more. You can take more time off, do more business, and make more money. So that was really, I concentrated all my, inf uh, all my time and my energy on specifically being a listing agent. Right. So uh, when you, uh, you know, were cold calling these folks and marketing yourself, what was kind of your pitch to, uh, to these listings? Um, you know, if you didn't have a huge book of business or a huge wealth of experience mm -hmm. just yet. Uh, yeah, my my line, my script was so sophisticated, Michael. <laughs> Hi, this is Chris Stafford with Zephyr Real Estate. When do you plan on moving? 
That was <laughs> that was the whole line. Say that 50 million times. You know, the funny thing is, is they say if you ever really want to get good at something, uh, I think Alex Hormozzi, you know, you probably follow him on YouTube. Alex Hormozzi always says, if you really want to get good at something, do it a thousand times. And that's what I did. I mean, I just basically called as many people as I could. Uh, and again, I wasn't the sharpest pencil in the box at the time because I realized I didn't like cold calling. But I did it, and that was a great way for me to jumpstart my career. Would I do it now? No, nope, not not at all. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely, yeah, I absolutely follow Alex Hermosi. And then I'm a big uh, sports guy, and there's always that, you know, you practice something 10,000 hours to perfect yeah. that, you know, so exactly. uh, def- definitely understand exactly. that. Uh, well, so you mentioned, you know, not, you know, really um, – not enjoying the cold calling. So what were some of the things that you started to do, um, you know, uh, throughout your career, but even, uh, you know, our coaching agents now uh, to market themselves outside of that cold calling? Well, I'll tell you. So there are so many different ways to get listings. And my, when I'm coaching a realtor uh, and for myself personally, I like my real estate clients, excuse me, my coaching clients love the fact that I'm still selling right now in San Francisco because I sort of like know, I know what works. I'm still in the trenches. I know it doesn't work. So my whole philosophy, my theory is to not spend money to get listings. There are so many different ways to get listings where you don't have to spend money. I run a really lean ship. Um, I think my expenses, my real estate expenses are only 22% of my gross commission income. So I really just, I, I'm just really trying to keep my expenses down. So there's a lot of different things that you can do that I found. Uh, and I think that the most important thing, as you probably know, is uh, belly-to-belly marketing is really, especially in nowadays, it's just so important because sellers' BS meters are tuned so high that you really have to figure out different ways to meet sellers, to find listings and leads uh, in a really authentic kind of way. Uh, and so there's so many different ways that you can do that. Working your SOI I'm like the king of my SOI. So, you know, working your SOI, really touching base with them, really meeting with them, lunches, dinners, um, especially people that have given you referral referrals. Uh, those people I have segregated in my CRM, and I, I touch those people once a month that I do something really nice, hand note, email, lunch, dinner, whatever. So working your SOI um, is super important in today's day and market because – as you know, people are going to do business with people they know, like, and trust. And these people love you. And the funny thing is, I, I digress for a second. I'm coaching one guy in uh, Southern California, and he's door knocking. He's door knocking like a crazy person every single day and doing really well doing it, but he can't, he won't call his SOI. And I'm like, I won't use his name, but I'm like, these people know you and love you. Why don't you call them? You're leaving all this money on the table. And yet he's door knocking every single day, which is something that nobody likes doing. So uh, I think that working your SOI is super important. I think working out of state, um, out of area owners is really important. Working NODs. I'm having a, a, a great time working probates, really um, cozying up to probate attorneys, uh, investment advisors. So I think it's really important not only to work your SOI and do all these other things, but it's also important to build your SOI. So one tip that I always talk about that I still do to this day is set a, a standard for yourself. I'm really big into setting minimum standards for myself of what I'm going to do every single day, Monday through Friday, and call professionals that you don't know. And this is a great way to get referrals from people that you don't know. I'm talking about CPAs, Attorneys, corporate attorneys, probate attorneys, um, uh, investment advisors, insurance agents, just call them up out of the blue and just say, hey, Chris Stafford with Compass Real Estate, I heard you do great things. Do you mind if I stay in touch with you for referrals? And they don't know whether you're talking about you giving them referrals or vice versa. And I guarantee you they're always going to say, oh, sure, definitely stay in touch with me, send a card. And I, I send something in the mail that's a lot more elaborate than a card, but I put them in my CRM. I have a minimum standard anywhere from three to five new people that I put into my CRM every single week. And these are professionals that work with people who have money that it could give you real estate referrals. And so I've done really well with that as well. 
Yeah, I think that's really um, uh, important to build those professional relationships yeah. because it's, you know, you think about all the people that they come into contact with. Yes. You're opening up that, you know, you're opening up their sphere of influence to yourself. Yes, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And there's so many different ways that you can really massage them and really work with them. And, uh, you know, it's the old 80-20 rule, right? 80% 80 of the people are going to try to get you off the phone. They're going to be nice to you. They're going to be cordial. But 20% of the people are going to be super friendly. And those are the ones that you really, in addition to the 80%, the 20% are the ones that you really want to cultivate and get really creative in how to cultivate them. I have one uh, woman in Seattle that consistently, she keeps boxes of cookies in her car and she gives these cookies to, as she's driving by these professionals' offices, pops in and gives them cookies. I mean, something as silly as that really endears herself to these people and she's doing really well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just that, you know, it's that you just get your face in front of them every once in a while. They just have to remember you, you know, they're not going to, you know, if you don't make contact for two months, you're, you're not going to be that immediate person. They, uh, they refer yes, out. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And give them business back. And that's the key to reciprocate. And so as much as you can try to give as much business as you can to them as well. Yeah. I think it's interesting, you know, um, how we've, things have gotten so, you know, AI is like the big buzzword and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But really in real estate, it, it has cycled back to that more personal uh, relationship building. Absolutely. Type business. Absolutely. I think the most important thing that we can do as listing agents, and I think this is more, I mean, two points I'll make. One is you really have to have the right mindset. And I, and I just did a video about this this morning. It's super important for you to have the right mindset that you know that you are going to be the person that is going to be the best listing agent for these sellers. And you need to expect it. And you need to be writing this down. I mean, I, I do like affirmations every single day where I'm affirming the fact that I'm the best listing agent for these people. Um, so that's number one. Mindset is something I could talk about for hours. We have to have a good mindset. But the, the second thing that I wanted to say is in light of what you just said, it's super important for us. We have one job as a listing agent when we're meeting with a seller in a listing presentation. I do like I, I joke that I do a 30 minute listing presentation. I never do longer than 30 minutes. And I have some reasons why, because I give them a lot of information up front and all that stuff. You have one job when you're meeting with a seller in a listing presentation, and that is to Make them feel comfortable. Build rapport. Because, again, going back to people are only going to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And so really taking the time when you're with them, in front of them, to really listen to them. Ask them questions. And don't be thinking about your next question, but really listening to what they're saying. And really tap into what are their insecurities? What are their goals? What are their motivations? What are they afraid of? That type of thing. And then to the extent, Michael, that you can then use your own personal experiences and help them out, make them feel more comfortable, that's really going to you know, seal the deal. Uh, I have one example where I um, listed a condo for sale last, uh, was it last year. I think it was last year. And it was an, a 90-year-old. One, one, the woman was 92 and the man was 95, if you can believe it or not. They were selling their condo in San Francisco to move back to New York City where their family was. And they were freaking out. I was in competition with two or three other uh, listing agents. And they were super f concerned about you know moving across country and all that. And so the whole time, once I saw the condo, I sent them a bunch of information um, up front. We never talked about marketing. We never talked about price. I spent the whole time talking to them about how the fact that I've moved cross country three times, maybe four. And so I know what it's like. I know how crazy it is and what all the problems that can come up. And so I was really like having this really deep conversation about how I can help them with the move. And I have these people to refer to. And I can tell you this isn't going to work and that's not going to work or this will work. We just really bonded over this whole cross country thing using my experiences as it related to them. Uh, and literally, honest to God, 30 minutes later, they signed the contract. And I, I love the fact that I was able to help them using my own personal experiences. But do whatever you have to do to really build rapport with sellers. I think that's your only job as a listing agent. That's how you're going to get the deal. And you've got to figure out how to build that rapport. That's super important. 
Yeah. And, and you mentioned it uh, a moment ago about how, you know, uh, you send a lot of stuff, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of, you provide a lot of value on the front end. And I think that's yeah. super important is that they already have a pretty, you know, they are, they have an idea of maybe the type of marketing that you do, or maybe some yeah. of your experiences so that when you are on that listing presentation, you're not having to necessarily go point by point. This is how I'm going to market your home. You can oh, yeah. focus on, you know, building those more personal relationships. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, in the old day, in the old days, <laughs> we used to have these listing present. It were paper, and we used to have these listing presentations that were like I don't know, eighty-seven pages long. And I remember somebody taught me, you know, go through each page and go through all the comps, detail by detail. And thinking, oh my God, thank God we don't do that anymore because you're right. It's like. Get, nowadays, sellers are savvy. They've got the internet. They pretty much know what their house should be listed for and what it's what it's valued, what it's going to sell for. If you provide comps up front before you even meet with them, if you provide your marketing strategies up front, if you provide your testimonials and people to call, uh, and remind me, I've got one other tip, and then... Um, Ask them, have conversations with them before you meet them. You know, ask them, what, what's their motivation? Why are they selling? Uh, you know, what are your concerns? Do you have any issues with how? You can have those conversations with the seller well before meeting with them. And so I think it's really important to have those conversations, send that material. So by the time that they, um, so by the time that you meet with them, you're there. All right. They know who you are. And here's the tip. Thank God I remembered. I almost forgot it. <laughs> the tip is this. What I've had, what I do quite consistently is everybody, all of us who are listing agents have had sellers that um, love you, past clients that you did a great job, you've become friends with, you've done such a great job that they should call the sellers, your prospective sellers, uh, before you meet with them, unannounced. You know, just tell them to call you know, Sally Jones and tell Sally Jones what a wonderful guy you are and what a great job you did for him. And when the, your prospective seller gets this phone call out of the blue from a past client of yours, it's already paving the way for you, you know, when you first meet with them. So I do that quite successfully. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned um, mindset and how that's a big part of, uh, you know, your whole you know, everything that you do and then really with your coaching. So I, I want to kind of touch on that a little bit because I think that's really important um, for agents to be uh, a both confident in themselves, but, you know, just overall having a good mindset. I think it, it rubs off on the people that are around them as well. Yeah, absolutely. One of the first modules in my course is all about mindset. Um, it's, I just think, in anything that you do, it's super important to be in the right space in your head. Um, because if you're not, it just makes it a lot e- harder to deal with problems and everything else. So waking up in the morning, like for instance, what I do is I wake up, I meditate, do yoga, I work a little bit, and then I either swim or lift weights, come back, have a light breakfast, and then start work. Uh, I also do affirmations and write out my goals, as I mentioned earlier. Doing all these things for me helps me become the best person I can be in my own head. It helps me get rid of that negative self-talk. It helps me be more positive about, you know, what I'm going to experience during the day. And it's almost like you can future cast yourself during the day having successful results. Because I guarantee, I mean, we've all been there. We're all human. We all have that negative self-talk. Um, we all do stupid stuff that isn't going to contribute to our body being strong and our mind being uh, strong. And I can, you know, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but if you wake up because you were drinking alcohol last night or you went to lunch and you're, you ate fast food or whatever and you start feeding your mind and your body with all this junk, you're not going to have the energy. You're not going to have the motivation. You're not going to have the creativity. You're not going to have the... The, the perseverance when your clients are yelling at you or you lose a big deal. I mean, everything is going to become much more difficult and much uh, harder. So I think, I, you know, a lot of people don't like to talk about mindset. And it's the age old, uh, you know, the age old saying is, how's the saying go is you have to sell people what they think they need. 
But what they really need is they need strong mindset. And so that's one of the things that I practice and encourage every single day with all of my coaching clients to really be in the, and some people are different. It doesn't always, you know, what I do in the morning that, that works for me doesn't mean that, you know, somebody else is going to, instead of meditate, they're going to probably pray or they're going to go do different kinds of exercises or whatever it is. It is critically important. And another aspect of mindset too is really believing in, and I'll, I'll, I'll share an affirmation that I, that I do that I found. I sort of created this through some courses and stuff like that, but you really have to believe and know that it's certain. And one of the greatest affirmations that I, that I've come up with is like, for instance, ask it in a question, say an affirmation in a question because it's assumptive. You are assuming that you're already there and also use the word I'm certain. So for instance, this is an affirmation I just wrote this morning. Why am I certain I'm in perfect health? To me, that's a great affirmation because you're, you're assuming that you have perfect health. And you're positive about it and certain. And I think that that is the most important thing when we're meeting with sellers and we're getting listing leads and setting appointments is that we have to have a certainty about ourselves in our head that this is going to happen. And, and it gives you confidence and comfort when you're doing that. Because sellers nowadays, Michael, I mean, you know, sellers nowadays, they can detect if you're nervous, they can detect if you don't have the experience. I mean, again, their meters are so finely tuned that they want somebody that is really going to be certain and confident that they are going to get them the highest price and do the best job for them. So I think it's critical. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and even I know for me personally, uh, I made some changes in my life in the last like six months or so. And I've seen a huge um, jump in productivity, creativity, just all of it. Uh, and it was really, uh, honestly, it was focusing on that morning time and, yes. you know, making, making sure that I was, you know, I was good and prepared for the day ahead. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I, I am super strong on my schedule, probably 80% of the time in the morning. Uh, you know, my afternoons all go to hell in a handbasket right. but, and, and then try to talk to me at eight o'clock at night and I'm falling off chairs. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so tell me about uh, your, your coaching program and Agent Unleashed and how all that came <laughs> about and, and, you know, really what are some of the main focuses uh, of that? Um, thanks for asking me about that. So the Agent Unleashed Collective, the collective is a program where it's nine weeks that we go through. Um, you know, everything that I think is important after 30 years of experience in terms of being a super powerful listing agent without spending money. How it came about it was basically a lot of real estate agents just came to me and asked me, okay, what are the things that I should do, uh, you know, to, you know, get to that point? How can I increase the number of listings? Maybe two times, three times, even five times listings per month. And, um, what I know for sure is you have to start out with mindset. We talk about a plan to put into place. And then the, the thing that I love the most, and we talk about how to increase your average sales price, how to spend money and invest money correctly, because I think most real estate agents are terrible with money. Um, and so we really get into that. We talk about how to effectively deal with sellers, my 30-minute listing presentation. But 80% of it, Michael, is me working one-on-one -on -one with a prospective client, a coaching client, and to figure out what is the best, what are the best marketing strategies they can use to find listings without spending money. So I don't have a cookie cutter approach. This is the thing that I love the most is really getting to know my coaching clients and figuring out, okay, what do you like to do? What are you going to do consistently and enjoy doing it? Because as you know, the money's in the consistency. So I don't say you have to do A, B, C, D, E. I work with them to figure out, okay, ideally, what are the three best strategies that you can do, you can do it consistently, and let's deep dive into those things and make you a master at all three of those strategies without spending a lot of money to, so to fill your listing pipeline so that you're consistently you know, selling two to four or five, six listings per month. And so that's really, 80% of the whole program is that. But um, I just love doing it. I love doing it. We have a mastermind program twice a month. We're with top listing agents around the country, and we help each other, support each other, exchange ideas. Um, 
I also, you might find this hard to believe that I'm a pretty goofy ass kind of guy. So <laughs> I love, you know, it's funny because I have to tell you this real fast. I have a spiritual mentor. Uh, I also have a strong accountability program because I think that's super important accountability. And I'm accountable to a spiritual, uh, my spirituality to a woman, uh, 85 year old woman in Nevada. And, um, and I, I hate to say this on air, but basically she always tells me she's so funny, so super smart. And she says, you know, Chris, we're making all this shit up anyways. Why don't we make up fun stuff? And, and it's true. Let's have fun doing that. And that's really what, what I'm all about, creating a super fun business that we're going to enjoy doing every single day. So probably more than what you wanted to hear. <laughs> no, I actually, I, so I really like the idea, you know, of, of going on these deep dives with your clients and finding those, those couple of things that they are going to be excited about doing because so many times I know, um, you know, people will sign up for coaching programs and it's really hammering home like one specific yes. marketing avenue. And maybe it just doesn't align with their personality or yes, business exactly. style. And it, you know, they get so beaten down from it that they give up on it and, you know, maybe are so closed off to hearing what other people have to say and, and other, you know, different ways of doing things. And I mm. think um, if you can, it, it's really coaching people to excel at what they're good at. Exactly, exactly. Because if I told somebody, somebody came into my program and, and I said to them, okay, you need to do 30 videos, one a day, all month, and post them everywhere. And this is going to get you listings. Or you need to call 200 expireds. And if you're not into that, I mean, why bother? I mean, what's the fun of doing that? One other thing that I do too is I have a unique strategy, which I call the micro momentum marketing strategy. And that's basically to learn new marketing techniques and take it baby steps. And really chop it into small little pieces because if you do something small every single day, something new every single day, you build up the confidence and the comfort of doing it. And you're going to want to do it more. So it's, again, all about really working with the potential coaching client to see what they're going to really enjoy doing so that they do it every single day. Yeah. And with that, with the micro marketing approach, how important is it to be paying attention to not only what other real estate agents are doing, but other uh, sales professionals that you see, you know, making a big splash? Like you've mentioned, you know, the Alex Hormozis and, and those type of people just kind of consuming that information so you can kind of take little bits and pieces of what they're doing or what they're coaching and kind of implementing it into your own mm -hmm. business. That's a great question. No one's ever asked me that question before. It depends, you know. I'm a little bit torn about that question because one, I think it's important if you take, you can glean a lot of really cool information from people like Alex Ramosi from a sales standpoint. My only thing where I'm tripping a little bit is what I don't want people to do. I don't want real estate agents to compare themselves to other agents because that's a slippery slope where you start feeling really inferior and you start doing, because you know, I know one real estate agent uh, in Miami. The guy is young. He's super good looking. And he kicks out videos that are doing really well for him. But if you start comparing yourself to this young, good looking guy who's making 100 videos a month and you think to yourself, well, I just made one this week, you know, it starts, you start. So I, I, I think it's really important to be careful um, and see, just don't compare yourself to other people. Glean the, the positive information that you can. And then, uh, but your only competition is yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's really important with that um, to, you know, take the techniques and, you know, make sure that you are setting up your, your own KPIs or, or whatever it is yeah. uh, that you are going to gauge the success of these on, you know, once you get that technique, kind of forget where you got it from and, and don't look and see what make it doing. yourself, make it yeah. your own. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 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 Well, um, before we wrap up, I do want to ask, um, you know, for somebody that is, uh, uh, is either new to real estate or has been a buyer agent for a really long time. It's, you know, what are some of those, what's your one big tip uh, for people to kind of get over the hump and go after, uh, you know, becoming a listing agent? My very, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I probably would say the biggest tip is to find somebody in your life that is a top producing listing agent, that is good at what they're doing, 
and be friends with them, associate with them, and mastermind with them. Whether you want to hire me as your coach, that's great. I would love it. But if you don't want to do that, find other listing agents that you can associate with, figure out what they're doing, start mastermind groups. I I love mastermind groups, and anybody can start their own mastermind groups with top listing agents in other areas. That's not their area. So I think just, you know, if you want to learn how to play tennis, find somebody better than you and take their advice. And that's probably my biggest tip. Yeah, absolutely. Cut your yeah. learning curve. Cut your learning curve. Right. Well, and, and you know, I, I said it was one of my last questions, but really, um, you know, you yourself, you hired a coach early, you know, right out of the gate. Yes. And I think that is such a wise investment. You know, you can spend all the money in the world doing all this marketing, but if you don't have the accountability or a pathway of making it successful, you know, all those marketing dollars go out the window. Whereas if you have somebody to help kind of guide you along the process. It's- Absolutely. I mean, I, I've got somebody in every area of my life, spiritual, physical, financial. I mean, I got a food coach, I medical. I mean, you can do anything yourself. It's just going to take a heck of a lot longer. Why not cut your learning curve in all areas of your life by associating yourself with people that are better than you? And it's absolutely worth, worth the investment because you're going to get that paid back times 10. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for people that are listening to this, where can they find uh, more uh, information from you about your coaching program and all that good stuff? Yeah, absolutely. You can reach out to me. You can contact me and see my free masterclass at my website, which is theagentunleashed.com. That's theagentunleashed.com. Awesome. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, speak with us today. Super fun. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Michael. I want to thank Chris for taking the time to speak with us today and really like how he talks about focusing on the type of lead generation you are comfortable with while introducing new techniques in small doses. Remember to check out The Agent Unleashed at theagentunleashed.com. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.